I'm Noah Campbell, technical marketing at BlackBerry, and we're here with Laura Graves, a machine learning engineer at BlackBerry. Laura, please introduce yourself for us. Hey, thanks a lot, Noah. Uh, my name is Laura Graves. I work as a machine learning engineer at BlackBerry, working on the Sylines Gateway product, um, primarily involved uh, in security solutions. So we're looking at ways we can use uh, machine learning to keep our users and their data safe from network threats, uh, data exfiltration, uh, anything that might compromise their users or the business. Well, that's fantastic. So a lot of deeply technical concepts. I'm so glad we could get you here to you know shed some light on that, but in, and how it relates to the work that you're you're doing uh, you know with our ztna product and with a lot of the work that we're doing to understand zero trust network access so really briefly for folks could you explain the need for zero trust network access from a security perspective yeah absolutely so the kind of foundational idea behind the ztna that we're trying to go for is that we don't have any assumption that endpoints or users or network activity is safe. Uh, so unlike more traditional platforms where we might assume that if a user has the proper credentials or is part of the internal network, that they're trusted and should be able to access any resources, we treat anything like a potential threat. And that involves a lot of continuous authentication, uh, evaluation of users, endpoints, network activity, anything like that, to try and make sure that anytime someone's doing something on our network, we're evaluating it, make sure they are who they say they are, they should have access to what they're trying to access, and if what they're doing is is allowable. Mm -hmm. And Specifically, we use machine learning in a kind of myriad ways across that to evaluate this activity. Um, we do some endpoint analysis, we do network traffic analysis, we do kind of behavioral analysis, all sorts of ways to, to ensure that people are accessing what they're supposed to be accessing and that they are who they say they are. Mm -hmm. And that's so important because there's so much on the internet that you can, you know, of course, you know, encounter. And the the threat that that presents for organizations sometimes they don't even have an understanding of what that is because there is so much out there. And I know one of these things, you know, one of these topics are beacons. BlackBerry, we were actually we literally wrote the book on beacons. I I know that from our threat research team. So take us first through what beacons are and and why that's a threat. I know that's an area of expertise for you. Yeah, great. Um, so when we talk about malware beaconing, we're specifically talking about a type of post-exploitation um, network traffic. Uh, so in this case, the bad actor has managed to get their software implanted on a an endpoint, whether that's a corporate endpoint or a user's home computer or anything like that. Uh, they've gained access to that computer and they've been able to put a program on and they want to be able to maintain communication and command and control over that endpoint. Um, but maintaining a live network connection is risky. Uh, firewalls can detect it. Anyone could simply see this network traffic and, and be aware of the activity. So they use a bunch of different techniques to try and hide what they're doing. And beaconing is one of those ways. And in this way, the infected endpoint will reach out periodically to a command and control server ran by the uh, the person who took over the, the system and ask for further instructions. So instead of having to maintain a live network connection, they can wait hours or any amount of time, query that call home server saying, what are your next instructions? And then the server can write back and say, I want you to do a network map, or I want you to gather some data and send it back to me, or I want you to spread yourself to other computers on the network, any kind of instructions. And these are very hard to detect because they can be found in almost any kind of network activity. You can disguise this as HTTP or HTTPS traffic. You can disguise it as DNS traffic. You can disguise it as almost anything. If you can communicate between two computers, you can use it for beaconing. We really uh, want to be able to detect this because it's one of our zero-day uh, analysis methods of detecting network infection. Um, we can pick up on things before anybody realizes that the network has been compromised or that a user has been compromised, and we want to be able to block it. We able to, want to be able to identify that endpoint that, that is being communicated to, block it, and shut down that, uh, that bad actor from having control over systems on our network. Well, that's really illuminating, Laura. I mean, the idea that these beacons can be anywhere on the system, there's many ways at which they can enter the system, and they're very difficult to detect. So, you know, from a Silence Gateway perspective, we've got folks working from home and working really from anywhere, uh, more than we've ever had before. 
you know, and they're going to be running into these beacons, or more, probably more precisely put, these beacons are going to be running into them. And we know that they're very difficult to detect, and we know that organizations really would need to invest a lot of time, a lot of skill into figuring that out in their environment. So how, from a silence gateway perspective, what tools and techniques are we using to detect these beacons so we can keep organizations safe? So we've been working on developing a system that we've recently uh, put into the Silence Gateway platform that actively monitors network connections uh, coming from any gateway enabled uh, endpoints, whether that is your uh, mobile device or your home computer or your workstation. Um, so these network connections are kind of continuously monitored and we try to get a snapshot based on this network activity, based on some uh, frequency of communication, the uh, what the actual traffic looks like, uh, what the endpoint kind of profile looks like based on how many net machines are connected to it or how much network activity is going to it. And we use this to try and develop a risk analysis of each of these endpoints to say how likely it is that this is a call home server that's being used for this beaconing. Um, and then once we've done this analysis, we can uh, do a conviction or simply nothing if the if it looks like benign traffic um, to say based on co configurable risk levels this is something that is likely malicious this isn't likely you know malware traffic that we want to block or we want to alert administrators to um, or if it's something that we think is fine and we can just simply pass through um, and the configurable risk levels go from uh, at, at a few different uh, levels and then the administrator, the tenant administrator, can block or alert based on their choice of risk uh, risk tolerance. Fantastic. So we're using you know world class leading artificial intelligence to find these beacons that are very difficult to detect, and we know that they're difficult to detect. Experts, you know, third party folks as well as our own threat research team have said these are hard to detect. So let's put some AI and machine learning on that. We found the beacon. Silence Gateway detects it. From an administrator perspective, what happens at that point? And then from an end user perspective, what happens when that beacon has been, been identified? From the end user perspective, uh, it's very likely nothing happens. Um, it's possible that the endpoint that they're trying to connect to uh, becomes blocked and they'll get an alert on their computer saying that traffic to this destination has become a high risk endpoint and that will will stop allowing that traffic. From the administrator perspective, you get a lot more information. Uh, so this is where you'll see uh, where our detection came from, uh, when when we detected this endpoint, when we came to believe that it's a risk. You'll see the confidence that we have that it's a risk in terms of risk level ranging from low or medium or high. Um, and it's possible that you'll just get alerts, or if you've configured yourself to be a little uh, less risk tolerant, we can automatically block that endpoint for you so that we can protect your users. Um, in the case of an alert, it could go to your security analysis or your systems administrators for kind of triage to see, we've seen something suspicious coming from one of your computers going to this endpoint. Maybe there's a little investigation that needs to be followed up to see if you might have an infected endpoint or if something, something kind of fishy is going on. Mm -hmm. So from, you know, what I'm gathering, it's not disruptive for the end user. If they're using Silence Gateway and they run into a beacon, which in many cases would be this catastrophic event because we have something malicious happening here, the end user not really affected. Maybe the connection is blocked for that specific endpoint, but they're going about their day, they're being productive, and you're still continuing to enable that work from anywhere idea. And I mean, from the administrator, it really sounds like, you know, it's an informative alert to say, hey, you run into a beacon, uh, here's what we can do about that. So I think that's a really holistic picture of, you know, how we're enabling the zero trust network access in a way that promotes security and is really important to do that and highlights the, you know, importance of a secure working from anywhere, but also the user experience side of it, right? It's not an arduous task for you to continue about your day in a way that could, could be, like we said, catastrophic. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this can differ from a more traditional system where you might see that one of your endpoints has become infected and cut off access to that user or device entirely. In this, under this kind of ZTNA framework, we now have an endpoint that we don't think is safe and we can block traffic to it or we can alert whenever someone tries accessing it without compromising their ability to access other network resources or anything else they need to do their job.